Hi everyone, welcome to 2018. Happy New Year. So my, for my uh, first video of this uh, new year, I wanted to do something a little different. I have a uh, problem, a Tsumego problem to share with you. I thought was pretty interesting. And then after that, I was going to uh, just uh, ramble on for a while, give my uh, ideas for the new year, some thoughts on the channel and on the server where I play. Um, just kind of rambling. So uh, the point is, uh, I'll do the problem first. And so if you're just interested in the go, uh, you can uh, listen to that part. And when I start rambling, you can uh, stop at any time. Okay, uh, and you won't miss any uh, go. <laughs> uh, let's see. So this is a problem. This came from the program called Sumego Pro, which is an app that uh, runs on my um, I have a, a tablet, an Android tablet. They, they also have an iPad and iPod, uh, iPhone version, I think. iPad and iPhone versions. <clears throat> uh, it's pretty interesting. I, I uh, solve a couple problems with it every night, and I'm usually doing, well, I'm, I'm always doing just the easy and the medium problems. I don't do the hard problems because I have a hard enough time with the easy and medium ones. I've gotten to the point where I can do most of the easy ones, but not all of them. I get maybe three out of four. And um, and every now and then, uh, and the ones I miss, you know, sometimes it's uh, it's uh, just me being careless. But uh, other times there's uh, um, some really interesting ideas in these uh, so-called easy problems. And this is an example of one of them I ran across recently. Um, so this was labeled as an easy problem, and I could not solve it. So if you want to uh, just try it cold, uh, it's Black's turn to move. Um, and so without any hints or anything, just uh, if you want to, just try and solve it cold. You can pause the video here and try and figure out what does, what, how should black play? Okay, I just uh, paused there to give you a little time if you wanted to stop the video there. And I'm going to first talk uh, about uh, some ideas I tried that didn't work out, and then I'll give you another chance at it. So I'm going to, this, this part is going to be hints. <laughs> so we can see that white has black completely surrounded. And so this most likely is going to be a problem where black is trying to live. Sometimes um, the problems turn into, oh, well, there's some weak group on the outside you can kill and escape. And that's, that's the way you solve the problem. But in this case, it looks like there's no way to escape. There is a weak group here maybe you can kill. But in general, um, it looks like your, your idea here is going to be to figure out a way to, uh, to live as black. Um, and then speaking of the, the weak group here, I mean, the, the next thing I look at in trying to solve a problem like this is I look at all the forcing moves. And when there's a, a group like this with only two liberties, you naturally have um, some Ataris here that you can look at to see if they, uh, they lead anywhere. But in this case, I don't think they do. Um, so I tried here, and black just connects. And then I tried here, and somehow I just did not have enough time. It looks like I'm... I'm Okay, that's not an eye here. There's a potential for an eye in this area, um, and then maybe an eye along here. But it looks like um, white has ways to stop black from forming an eye. I, I didn't analyze that part in detail, so you just have to <laughs> take my word for that. Well, the problem tells you, you, after you try a couple of moves and you've gone off the track, it tells you that's not working. It says, wrong answer, and you have to try again. Uh, let's see, you could try the throw in here. Another way to deal with the... Uh, a problem where a group has a shortage of liberty. Sometimes you, you throw in and then you attack a group from the outside, force it to fill in that liberty, and sometimes that creates a, a group with a shortage of liberties. But in this case, all it did was connect it to the outside. And uh, well, you can still try and make some eyes over here. But once again, it looks like uh, white has ways to stop you from making two eyes. So both of those don't work. Um, so that was this throw in here and this direct Atari. Um, <clears throat> so with those as clues, if you want to try and solve the problem again, I'll give you a second chance. Okay, uh, yeah, pause the video here if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to give away the first move of the solution uh, right now, and it's a pretty clever move. It is the move G17. And uh, I really, even after I saw this move, I didn't understand what it's about. So let me explain. Um, suppose white just ignores that move and plays over here. That's what I thought maybe would happen. Um, then you can actually kill this group now. Now you can play this throw in and you capture that group. So this move um, G18 is actually threatening that group and white has to connect. So it's a forcing move. And uh, 
And so, yeah, when I saw that, I saw this move was the, you know, I was looking up the solution. I saw that this move was the answer and that the reply that was expected from white was over here. I really didn't get it at first. I had to stop and think, but uh, it really is about capturing that group with the throw in. So um, what's interesting is that that's just as much a forcing move as the two I looked at. So, you know, you still, when you're, when you're attacking a group, and I think this lesson can apply in, in real games. So that's why I wanted to dwell on it a little bit. Um, you know, if you're attacking a group um, or you're trying to gain a tempo, you look at these forcing moves. And, um, and so the Ataris are the most natural ones. But this move over here is just as forcing as either of those two Ataris because it really is threatening to kill that group. The question is, how can you find a move like that in a real game? And here's one way to find it. You can look at what happened after the throw-in because this is one of the moves you looked at first. You looked at the two Ataris, the, the, the Atari on this side and the throw-in there. And after the capture, if you pause here for a second and notice this group, there's the stone that you captured, and then it's only got one other liberty. So if you can cover all the liberties except for one where the stone was captured, then you have a throw-in that will allow you to recapture that whole group. So um, if you notice that, when you're in this stage, and you're looking at your forcing moves, you notice that the throw-in leaves this group with only one extra liberty besides the hole. Then taking away that liberty, that's what this move is really doing. One of the things it's doing, it's taking away a liberty from that group uh, so that the, um, so the throw-in is effective. You've taken away that outside liberty, and now you can recapture with the snapback. So that's, that's one point of that move. And then the second point is that it starts to build some eye shape. So like I said, white responds here. And now it's black's turn. And if you want to, uh, this is the last time I'll give you a chance to uh, pause and solve this problem. But if you want to, you can pause and see if you can figure out the rest of the solution. How does, how does black live here now that it's black's turn to move? OK, I'm giving the answer away now. The correct move here is uh, H18. And this uh, kind of shape should be familiar to you. It, it, we're creating um, what I call a W shape here. Well, let's, let's fill it in a little bit. Uh, white replies here. You block here. Say white comes in on this side. You connect. If white uh, tries to Atari this stone, you take that stone. That's one way it could proceed. Let's, let's go ahead and fill it in completely just so you can see. the uh, What I'm talking about is this shape here. Is, uh, is kind of a W shape. I guess you can see it on these stones here. Uh, and you get this uh, group of two eyes that uh, uh, make both these, uh, both these groups live. Notice that this group of stones and this group of stones are actually not connected. The only thing that's connecting them are the two eyes. But since both groups look at both eyes, they are both safe. So there's no, no false eyes in this picture, even if uh, white fills in there. Um, so anyway, that, that W shape is a very handy shape to know. It's often a good way to uh, create a uh, pair of eyes in the middle of the board. Um, let's see, there's other W shapes possible here. For example, let's see, suppose, um, well, white plays here. You connect, uh, white connects over here. You could go this way, and it gives you a W shape from this side as well as from this side. So you get kind of two, two W's facing each other. And uh, that, that's another example of the same kind of pattern. So that's a nice pattern to be able to, to recognize uh, in a real game, if you can spot that. It's a, a handy way to create eyes. OK, that's all I had to say about the, uh, that problem. And then, yeah, the rest of this video, I'm just going to be rambling. So you can uh, feel free to stop the video at any time. Um, so. Uh, it's the beginning of the year, 2018. I was starting to uh, think about what I might do in the next year and, and, um, and also uh, consider how I've uh, done for the last two years. Let's, let's go back to, let's see, I wanted to put this, leave this problem here. Yeah, leave this problem here, right in this position <laughs> as, as my background while I'm rambling. Um, so I've been... Uh, uh, making these videos for two years now. I went back and looked. My first video was in December of 2015. And so all of 2016 and all of 2017, I've been uh, playing Go and making these videos. And uh, I just learned Go a few months before I made that video 
in December, maybe about uh, two or three months earlier. So, you know, I've been playing Go for less than two and a half years. Now, it's true that I had uh, learned Go when I was much younger, but I never played, um, never really found anyone to play with. Um, yeah, probably never played as an exaggeration, but I didn't have anyone to play with, and so I gave up. After a while, you know, I read about it, I was interested in it, but I never got very far. So when I started reading again uh, about it, uh, when I got interested in uh, 2015, I guess it was in the fall of 2015, uh, uh, you know, it was like I was starting from the from the beginning. Uh, you know, I had to learn all over again about, uh, well, I, I didn't even remember what Josecki's were, and, and I was learning a lot of stuff. Um, so I think I improved pretty well at first, and then... Um, you know, I, I continued to improve through 2016, and then 2017, I seemed to be kind of stagnant. I went back and looked at my first game in 2017 in January, uh, and my rating at that time was 15Q, and my rating today on the uh, server is also 15Q. So, uh, so it's a year where I made no progress at all in terms of my rating, and um, you know, a couple other things didn't pan out for me last year. Um, I, I was um, reading this book. Um, it's volume four of the series. I've talked about it before, the Learn to Play Go series by Janice Kim. I think it's a good series of books. I finished volume three in 2016, and I started reading volume four this year, and I never, or in 2017, and I never finished it. Um, and then there was a tournament that I had signed up for. The, the uh, uh, It was actually the, the Open, the U.S. Uh, open, I think it's called, or anyways, it's, it's the main, the U.S. Go Congress, that's what it's called. It's the main main tournament in the United States, and, you know, anyone can play. It's, it's open to amateurs, um, and I had signed up, and then, then I had to cancel because uh, something came up. So uh, anyway, not, I didn't accomplish a whole lot in this year, but I do feel like my playing has gotten a little better anyway, even if it's not uh, reflected in my rating. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, ratings, I guess. Um, so the OGS server recently changed their rating system. And, and the OGS server, by the way, I think has improved a lot in 2016. I, I like it uh, better than it was. It's got the new rating system. It's, got, uh, it's gone to ad-free, so you don't have the ads anymore. And um, just looking at the number of people playing, it seems like the number of games on the server has gone up. So it's easier to uh, get a game these days. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the OGS server, and I hope they uh, continue to do well. Um, when the uh, rating system changed, you know, my rating went from 15Q to uh, 13Q, and I thought, well, that was great. It was uh, recognition that I had made some progress. But I, I noticed that uh, my rating was uh, influenced a lot by all the uh, 13 by 13 games I was playing. And when I played 19 by 19 games, I, I didn't do as well. So I switched to playing uh, exclusively 19 by 19 games, full games, just trying to uh, uh, learn how to play that that size of board better, and uh, and my rating uh, really plummeted. It, it went down to uh, oh, 16 or 17 Q, and then gradually it's it's gone back, and I've got it back into uh, the 15 Q area, and that seems to be pretty solid. I think I, I really am uh, fairly rated at around 15 Q, so I think that is okay. Um, you know, one good thing about the new rating system, Glico 2, is it does adjust quicker to uh, any changes. Um, and uh, and so uh, one side effect of that is there's been less sandbagging. So when I first started playing uh, on OGS, I, I was running into sandbaggers almost constantly. Uh, sandbagger, by the way, is somebody who just is much stronger than their actual rating. Basically, people who were one Don on other servers would come into this server, claim to be 25Q, and then just start uh, beating up on the players here. Which is uh, pretty depressing, actually. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's okay to play a strong player. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you can learn some things, but it's pretty annoying to play someone you think is, uh, you know, the same as you or weaker, and and then every move you make is a mistake, and everything you do goes wrong, and uh, just leaves you feeling like you're completely hopeless. Right? It's just not a not a good way to uh, stay interested in the game. So, so I really uh, dislike sandbaggers. Um, um, but anyway, that's that's just my personal peeve. I mean, it's okay to play a stronger player, but you have to approach it with the attitude that, uh, well, yes, if somebody is, uh, you know, 15 rating <laughs> categories higher than you, uh, then every move you make is a mistake, and uh, every move you make should be uh, 
played with that in mind that you know your opponent is going to show you uh, what your mistake is and you should just uh, learn from it and not expect too much but if you're you're playing a game and you think you're making some good fighting moves and nothing works out it's it's pretty pretty uh, depressing um, so anyway going back to the current state of affairs so they changed to uh, two things one is they don't let people specify their own rating anymore so nobody can uh, come in and lie about their rating uh, and then uh, they give people a preliminary rating and a high uncertainty. So after you know three or four games, pretty quickly um, they will disappear from uh, from the uh, initial category they're assigned to, and they'll they'll start approaching a category that's more appropriate. So it catches the sandbaggers pretty quickly and, and sorts them into into the appropriate bins. Um, so I appreciate the new rating system and. Uh, even though uh, <laughs> it did it did have this kind of weird effect on me where it gave me a, a, a boost and then it then after I started playing the 19 9 by 19 games it, it really knocked knocked me down a few pegs and I ended up at the same spot but I think um, in general I wanted to talk a little bit about the philosophy of uh, ratings uh, your rating is sort of a, a lagging indicator um, you know you can improve and it won't show up in your ratings right away you know take some games and uh, you know games are subject to random fluctuations and your choice of opponents and the matches so it takes a while for your rating to catch up to your level and secondly um, you know if you're just in it for the rating and you're not thinking about the game it can kind of uh, distort your enjoyment of the game you know if you're worried so much about losing rating points that you're just not uh, not playing fun or interesting moves you know you just maybe become super cautious trying not to not to lose and that can be in some cases a sure way to lose lose being over cautious so i think uh it's important not to uh to think uh too much about the rating especially while you're playing a game and just think about the game and uh you know who cares about the rating it will eventually catch up um so that's my thoughts on ratings so as I talk about what my objectives are for next year, I'm not going to set myself a rating objective. I mean, it might be nice if my rating in, improved, but I'm not going to set myself an objective like, oh, I have to get to 12Q by the end of next year because if, if it doesn't happen, then I'll be disappointed. Plus, I'll be going into all my games with the wrong attitude. So um, so my wishes for 2018, it's not, I'm not going to call them resolutions, but just things I would like to do. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to continue to do what I'm doing, which is uh, to make these videos, to do my uh, uh, little Tumego Pro problems, and uh, to play as many 19 by 19 games as I uh, as I can. I guess that's what I would like to do. Uh, you know, compared to last year's, I'd like to to more consistently play the 19 by 19 games, uh, so that I'm so I'm playing uh, several each week. And you know, I would I would kind of go uh, sporadically. I'll probably still happen where I play play some games in a row and then I won't play for a while but I'll try to play a little more consistently that's my my goal for next year um, this Tumego Pro um, I want to give them credit since I um, used this problem came from their this problem I used as an example came from their problem set I'll put their name in the uh, in the description of this video it's a it's an app that I actually uh, uh, take a look at uh, every night I do uh, four problems too easy because they have daily problems they have too easy and too medium problems every day and so I just uh, check them out each night before I go to bed and solve a couple problems it's a nice nice little activity before going to sleep and it's something that's easy for me to do so that's a way uh, you know I keep hopefully trying to build up my knowledge uh, bit by bit um, and then playing on the server is something I wanted to do um, now let's talk about the book um, I'm on volume four of the Learn to Play Go series. I think it's quite a good series. And I think, um, but the problem I'm having with it, and also I think a little bit with the previous one, is that uh, the advice, while it's, it's sound, it's not always easy to apply. I think at some point you really have to just go and gain more experience. So that's that's probably why I stopped uh, making progress in that book. And I just needed to play some more games so I could figure out how to apply uh, you know all of the uh, knowledge that they're trying to give me in that book so anyway my goal for this year is to <laughs> my wish for this year I'm trying to avoid the word goal or resolution <laughs> my wish for this year is to uh, finish that uh, book and take the self-assessment test and I'm hoping that uh, you know having having played some more 19 by 19 games I'll have a little more context to understand what they're what they are saying in the book I, it's not like the book is hard to understand in fact it's it's very easy to understand it's kind of uh, you can read through it pretty quickly but at the same time 
uh, it doesn't necessarily leave you with a feeling that you can understand and apply what you're reading. So that's why I'm hoping to get better at on that point. And then the, the last thing that I would like to do um, next year, sometime in 2018, is to play in another live tournament. So far, and I've only played in one tournament. I think that was two years ago. Like I said, uh, the tournament I had planned for last year didn't work out. So if I can play in another tournament, you know, I actually have a rating with the American Go Association of around uh, 17Q, I think. So hopefully I can play in another uh, uh, real uh, over-the-board over tournament and uh, pick up a few uh, rating points there. So those are my uh, wishes, what I would like to do in 2018. And of course, I will uh, make videos about those things and share them with you. So anyway, wish you all again a uh, happy new year. Hope you have a good year coming up and I will be seeing you again soon.